Hello friends of fiction. Today I am going to be doing my April wrap up. Welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, I'm Lana, an avid reader, particularly fantasy, paranormal, sci-fi. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to join the conversation. In April, I took part in the Magical Owls Readathon hosted by G from Book Roast. I chose to be in Aura this year, and that has five. Look how gnarly my hands are. Oh, I hate that hand. The cricket and bong. That's what happens when you play lots of sport with balls. 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 Yep. I chose the occupation of Aura, which meant that I needed to read five books to complete my owls. Surprisingly, I read them all. So then I read another three for shits and giggles. Let's talk stats. For the month of April, I read eight books. That was 3,028 pages, which works out to be about 100 pages a day, which is not too bad for me. One of them was a children's book, two of them were middle grade, four were young adult, and one was adult. I had zero one stars, zero two stars, three three stars, three four stars, and two five stars. For Transfiguration, I read House of House of Earth. Oh, I always trip on the up on this title. Words are hard. <sighs> House of Earth and Blood. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about what this is about. I did do a review video on it. If you want to see it poorly explained and my thoughts on it, check it out. I'll put it up here somewhere or in the description box. The brief version is it follows a half a half human girl named Bryce Quinlan. She's suffering a lot of grief after a murder that took place two years ago and then another murder very much the same happens and she is tasked by the Archangel Micah who is the big wig and controls everything in Crescent City to find the killer with the help of one of his people people, slaves, who goes by the name of Hunt Athala. I gave this book a solid four stars. After a very slow beginning, it picked up and I really enjoyed it. It made me cry, it gave me the feels, and I will continue reading this series, but it's not enough to make me want to read any other Sarah J Mass books. Next! For Charms, I read The Six Sacred Stones by Matthew Riley. This is the second book in this series. Um, but it is a an epic quest with a lot of like archaeology, 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 archaeological <laughs> history, and all of that sort of thing. They travel all around the world to stop the end of the world, and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. This was another four star read for me. The only reason it wasn't a five star is some of it was really predictable for me. There are a couple of things in it that happened that I was just like, really? Again, like it's been done before. I really enjoy Matthew Riley's writing. I love in stories when people from all different walks of life come together and become a family to the point where they would do anything for those family, including forsake their actual real family by blood. And that happens a lot in this. They have a team of small nations that want to, that one, they want to stop the end of the world, but two, they want the big powers to not get the power. The selection of nations that are together is really super cute. We have Australia, New Zealand, Canada, Ireland, UAE, Israel, Spain in the first one, Jamaica, did I say Jamaica? I think that's it. But what I liked about that most is that, especially for two of the characters, like their people hate each other. For them to overcome that prejudice and become so close, it's, I like it. I like that sort of stuff. Just like with, it's like a Gimli and Legolas type deal that they have going on there and it is just as cute and I'm for it just as much. There's a lot of espionage, like military and political espionage in it as well, but well, not so much political, but definitely military espionage. But obviously the military is governed by politics. Oh, I don't know enough enough about either, so... It's like Hugh Jackman meets Indiana Jones meets The Goonies, maybe? <laughs> Next! Got a little something brewing over here. For potions, I read Maui and other Maori legends. This... 
is just pure fun nostalgia for me. It just, it's essentially all of the tales of Maui. If you don't know who Maui is, Maui was a man who his mother thought was stillborn and she cast him out into the ocean and asked Tangaroa to take him. So Tangaroa did and Hinemoana and the wave children and all of the other elements protected him and carried him to his uncle and they also gave him demigod-like powers. So he's in Māori mythology, he's not actually a demigod but he has all of the powers because the gods themselves bless them upon him. I love the illustrations in this book, I just think they're gorgeous. Like even the sun. A lot of thought was put into illustrations because they're very similar to carvings on like Amurai and of um, Atikis and stuff like that. So five star for me. It gives me a sense of home and reconnects me to my culture and my people. Next! Next was Herbology. I chose to read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I got it right that time. I listened to this on audiobook. The narrator did a good job as a whole, but oh god, the, the English accents, especially for the for the girls, was painful. They were just so whiny that I wanted to just like claw my eyes out. I have enough whining in my life. I do not want to voluntarily subject myself to that torture. So I gave it a three stars. It wasn't even a three and a half. It was just so yeah, it was it was just a three star read from me. Next for Defense Against the Dark Arts, I read Deep Blue by Jennifer Connolly. Deep Blue is about a mermaid princess who lives in the oceans of Italy. At the beginning, she has a dream where river witches, who in the story aren't real, they're like an old wives' tale, they get called to her in the dream and repeat this prophecy about how her and five other girls need to stop this evil from happening. On the morning of her coronation slash betrothal, her kingdom is attacked and her and her best friend Neela escape for their lives to avoid capture. The danger at every turn, they do make two allies, but in a sea that is hunting them, there's not a lot of good guys. I did like this story. It is marketed toward young adults. In all honesty, it was too fluffy for me to be YA. And also, did I mention that it's published by Disney? So, to me, you don't get any more middle grade than that. I rated it purely on if it was a middle grade. So even the languaging, the descriptions were light and fluffy, beautiful, but light and fluffy. The world building was good, it was just, very Disney-esque. It was published by Disney, so that makes a lot of sense. I just think this was a middle grade book, so I rated it as such. So I got three and a half stars from me. So with that, that completed my Aura Owls. Then I decided that I'll just read some more because I had more time in the month. So I decided to do arithmetic, which was a randomization to pick your next TBR. Mine brought up Fantasy of Frost by Kelly St. Clair. She is one of my favorite of all time indie authors. Her writing style is really relaxed and fun and chill, but not in a a hard to read way like it's really easy to read she's really amazing at world building without just it being an information overload she keeps it simple she tells you what it needs to know and then gets on with the story which i absolutely love don't bog me down with all that shit i'm not trying to repaint it so this book is about a girl named olena she is next in line to become tatum However, her mum hates her and she's forced to wear a veil over her face. So she has never seen what she looks like. She's shunned by the court because her mother hates her so much. The abuse in this that she gets from her mother and her uncle is really quite sad. But it doesn't last for that long. They get their comeuppance. So it's okay. I'm not in any way saying that abuse is okay. Every three years they send out a peace delegate. It, it alternates between each world. The story starts at the end of this peace delegate where Elena falls in love with Prince Kedrick, who is the young prince, not the king, but the young prince 
of Glacium and they're talking about how when she rules how they can make the worlds coexist in real peace. They have a secret meeting where she's going to finally show Kedrick her face. She does and then he is murdered with an arrow. She figures out that it's not a wood from any tree that is in Solace so it has to be someone from Glacium. She gets kidnapped by the peace party and that is where the story really begins and kicks off. So much happens in this series. It is Oh, it's so good. There is quite a bit of swearing in it. There are two cool things about this book that I absolutely love and have always stuck with me. One is that the Salati people don't ask upfront questions. They make a statement with the question intended and I think that is really, really cool. The other thing is their names. So if you're not married or betrothed, then you have an O at the start of your name, so Olena. If you are married, you have it's just Lena, and then if you are widowed, then you put an A at the front, so it'd be Alina. I thought that was pretty cool. This is a five star reread for me, for sure. I could gush about this series for hours, but I'm gonna just not do that and get on to the next book. The next book I read was Tilly and the Wanderers, the first book of the Pages & Co series. I absolutely loved it. It's about a girl named Tilly who lives in her parents' bookstore and she finds that she can jump into books and walk through them and experience them. I loved this so much because since I've been like 16 years old me and my sister always said if we had a genie they could grant us three wishes one of them would be to be able to go inside of books and experience books on the inside and live them and be a fly on the wall or be a part of them however we wanted to this is one of my wishes come true I just enjoyed everything about it it is middle grade and I highly recommend it I can't wait till the next one and I gave it a four and a half stars it's just like a really nice fun quick read next the last book that I read was The Happiest Re Refugee by Ann Doe it is a biography on how his family came to Australia from Vietnam when he was very young. I just feel very lucky that I have never had to experience that and the likelihood of me ever having to is very, very slim. Their journey across from Vietnam to Australia was, no, I couldn't do it. It's, it just sounds horrible. There's a lot of ocean between Vietnam and Australia. Pirates are a real thing and they get attacked by pirates twice. And the rest is about his life growing up as a Vietnamese immigrant in Australia. Um, it is pretty interesting. Like, I could never give someone's life story a two star. So for me, like, it was good, but it wasn't amazing. So it was a three star for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Next month will be better. I need to go get my baby because she's crying <laughs> again. <laughs> seems to be the common theme of all of my videos. Ciao!